Well, if any of you remember, I built this last summer for the pheasants. And I sold the pheasants, keeping the quail. I'm going to turn this into a uh, garden shed. I just have to take this front off so I can uh, get things in and out of there, put bigger doors on the front. Got to leave the wire the, the rest of the way around. Because this homestead, like everybody else's homestead or small farm, you reuse things. Saving all those staples too. I got a big magnet in that box so I don't have to pick up staples in the yard. Using my fencing pliers for removing the staples. Need a good pair of hawk nose pliers. You can get them in just about any farm farm and country. Great for pulling staples out. They got those little biting teeth to get behind staples. If you can't get behind them with those teeth, you stick this little hawk nose behind them. Use a hammer to get it pound down around it, and then pull them out with the little teeth but in most cases you can get them with just the little teeth you can see I got this already loosened I'm gonna have to get my nippers and cut the along the top here so I can get this piece down the bottom will be off in a few minutes Then I'm going to remove this two before and then put a, a big door on the front of this. But for right now, I'm just going to, until I buy the material to close it in, I'm just going to get the wire and this opened up. Because I want to put my uh, lawn sweeper in here, my uh, feather plucker for plucking chickens. I want to put my... Uh, cement mixer in here and a few other things shelving my portable quail cage is going to go in here and by the time I'm done with that other than putting a few things on the wall or from hanging from the ceiling it'll be full but it'll also free up my garage it'll free up my back building and it'll be reusable again So you're sitting here empty waiting for birds. And then I'll reuse this wire too. Don't knock over my thing there, dog. Get staples on. Got a little busy this morning. Put in a nest box for the turkeys. I hung one of my bee traps up so we can catch some swarms of bees. Let's go over there and look at it for a minute, honey. Yeah, we could do that. Give me a short break here. Okay, guys. Doggy. Yeah, 
Now this tree is just every year we get a swarm of bees coming in this tree. So I put a trap out and I baited it with some what they call swarm commander. And the wind blew it back in my face, so I smell like swarm commander. He smells really good. So all it is is a there's a hole with a that allows the bees in. So when the bees get in there and you come out here in the middle of the night after they've been coming in and out and you close it. And there's little holes in there so it can get air in and out of there. Then you can take the trap down and set it where you want your bees to be. And then let them learn that they're going back and forth to that spot. Then you take the frames out of here and put them in a bigger hive. So for right now we're just waiting to catch some bees. There's some frames. There's some frames in there with a little bit of honey and uh, some empty empty frames so they could fill them up with eggs and larvae. And you let them get accustomed to going back and forth there when the, the what'll happen is that the scout bees and they're looking for a new place to go whoever's got the bees or whether in wild bees in the trees and that honey bees and uh when the scouts are looking for a new home for the queen and half the hive, they'll smell that swarm commander and start investigating that trap. And hopefully by the end of summer we'll get a couple of trap bees. It's a game of chance, but you don't want to spend 150 to 200 dollars a for a bunch of bees. That's a cheap way out right there. If we don't get any, then next year we'll buy a couple of nukes. In this project, uh, leaving the wire up will keep somebody from taking my stuff. It'll give me room to get things done. Now all I have to do is worry, wait until I can get the The material to build the doors. I'd go and buy the material now, but seeing we're in his, this crisis, we have to uh, stay stay put. So for the time being, we're doing what we're supposed to. All right, really can't do much more until I get to find that pair of blue pliers where I can cut across that. Why don't we go show the uh, elephant ears? Because well, we talked. They haven't even started. But. Well, we'll show what that's all about. And before we go to the elephant ears, look at these beautiful daffodils. Oh, I know. I thought you were going to sit there. Oh, look at there's a there's a uh, bumblebee. Yeah. That's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> I know we're looking for the honey ones. So. Honeybees. This garden's it's not really a garden. It's kind of like a makeshift. We just kind of here, but I need to work on this. But anyway, the daffodils have all come up. And I decided to take some of my house plants out to give them some sun. And this is my Brazilian philodendron, which I absolutely love. But I was thinking he needed more water because he looked a little wrinkly, but then I felt the soil and he was wet, so I don't know. 
too wet, too dry, you can always kill your plants for sure by overwatering. So I always try to stay on the other side of that. But even then, you just never know. So here, these guys are hanging out. They're going to go in because I think it's too cold overnight. So they can stay out while it's nice and sunny. And then I have my Norfolk pine pine out here and my pygmy date and over here i don't know if i'm going to be able to get to it or not today i hope i say it correctly it's my brom aid and it has a beautiful flower that comes up but after the flower comes up the mother plant dies but she makes babies i took one baby off there's another baby that's about to be i have to take off so while the mother plant is dying, she makes what they call pups, which are more babies. So I'm hoping to get as many pups as I can to start more plants. So she's there. And you want to take the pup off when it's like maybe three-fourths as, as big as the mother. So this one's about to go. Um, I actually pulled the pup off too soon. It doesn't look good, but Clay said it was still living. But this other one's coming along. It's kind of hard to see them, but... It's like um, another one close to the bottom of the plant, so we're hoping the to make... The still living. Yeah, there's a, there's a pup on it. We can take that off if you want. Okay, guys, these are our elephant ears. They actually look like a coconut, and we got them at Walmart. How high do they get, Dal? Five feet or better. Yeah, and they're really cool looking. And you got to make sure you look and buy the correct one. Because sometimes you might see elephant ears and they might be the small ones, but these are the big ones. Play, play, clay, play. Clay, clay planted them in these milk jugs so he could see the root system. And then we'll put them in the ground. I'll transplant them after they start growing. And you do have to take them out in the fall and bring them in, and they'll just be a house plant, which we're going to put in the new part of the house that you guys haven't been there yet. So it's not actually new, it's just. The part that we just closed off for a while that we're opening all that up and it has like a big sun area so we're going to put these there because it has room room for lots of big plants and uh, this was a funny story i thought this was an african mask this is not an african mask i saw it in the ground there's more in the house and they, they're a lot healthier than this guy i thought it was an african mask plant looks like a house plant but it's actually some kind of lily so I'm going to actually try to put this back in the ground and grow it, but I I didn't know, and I thought it was, uh, and I thought, huh, what's this house plant out here? Because we were moving around some things, there was some gardening that was around before I was here, but this is actually some kind of a lily, it is not a house plant, <laughs> so, but it was growing okay in the house, but that's why that is there, and then this is our lavender, you need to water it. I did water it. Did you? Uh, yes, they did. So this is the lavender. We've been waiting to get this going. And this actually is growing right out of its pot. And so we have to, this is an outside plant. So we're going to fix this one up and have some lavender on our property, which we're really excited about as well. Hope you guys can hear me well with the trucks going down. And now we are going to take our break. We're starting to set up things here for our like outdoor living room. I gotta find my blue nipping pliers so I can cut the top of that wire off. Okay. We like to relax, and so we're gonna make this like a little living room. So we have several computers. So this one we have out right now. We got some speakers with it. We had some lunch, cell phones. He looks like he's thinking about his nap. You look tired, hon. I am tired, but I still got a lot to do with. It. Tomorrow's gonna rain, and, and I've already as much done as I can while it's sunshine. I'm like, can you move this TV in there? And <laughs> He's like, Ruthie, it's going to be sunny today. Yeah, when it's rainy, you do the inside stuff. So nice days, we get up, we get outside, we spend almost all I day outside. I still got all them dishes in there I got to do yet that I didn't get done last night because it was nice out. Yeah, I know. We'll get to but it. But we got two days of rain coming, so. And for two people with paper plates, it wasn't that much. <sighs> okay. So look at, are you sleepy, baby? I'm getting tired, so. So I still got things to do. So we're working here today. Just thought I'd give you guys a little update of what's going on here today. 
Got to look around, find my blue pliers. Yes, I'm going to go in there, look for the blue pliers. The cat still hasn't had her kittens. She found this one place in the living room that she's kind of hiding out in. But she usually, she's a big baby, so she wants mommy to be right there with her when something isn't right. But this time, daddy's going to be with her, if anything, if she needs you. She Char won't get that if I'm busy doing something Princess else. Princess Charlene. Oh, excuse me. Princess. She's, Charlene's really spoiled. Okay, guys. Should I show them your sign on the door? Kind of you want. It's only keep people away. <laughs> we figured that was a good way to have people. You don't have people stopping in and banging on your door. And they do anyway. We had somebody come by today anyway. But then, hey, I'm really happy because this morning somebody took the free stuff. It took a whole night. And then I had some other junk. And I said, you want these four boxes, too? And she's like, yeah. I said, great. <laughs> so I felt, felt pretty happy about that because we're trying to get things cleaned up around here. So, and we did follow the guidelines of social distancing. <laughs> yes, we've been doing that. Well, well, she was here. She stayed far away. We stayed far away. And I just kind of pointed, like, that stuff right there. If you want that, you can take that. Because I had put out some more boxes that I was going to bring to the road, but she got here before I did it, so I just said, go ahead and take it out, and she was happy to do it. Okay, guys, so with that, remember, big or small, you too can be a backyard farm. God bless, guys. See you in the next video.